Yeah. Where's Leia? It was a trap. We're already in the decay stage, so we're fucked. You gotta give me an Ivan. There's something you can't do. Wait, what? <laughs> Previously on The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 2. Mando bathed in the living waters under the mines of Mandalore. He is now a child of the Watch again. And Bo-Katan liked what she saw with Mando. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of this episode? This episode was good. I got a chill. I, I really like when you can't tell who's good, who's bad. And so is the New Republic, are, are they good? Are they bad? Are they evil? They're, they're rehabilitating people. But in another perspective, that's brainwashing. Also, which, which one's worse? Which one is, is worse morally? Like cloning slaves or having people be your prison slaves? Like they're both equally sentient beings that have their, their autonomy ripped away. Also, I love it. I love it. I love it when the morally ambiguous guy is a scientist. Like, yes, yes, these are my people. And the Mandalorian culture that we see in this episode, so cool. I nerd so hard for Mandalorian culture. It And like... The idea of they they have these buckets on the head and you don't care what they look like as long as they are your brothers and sisters in this cult, and it, it, I love it. Overall, I I'm I'm going for a nine out of five out of ten. Nine out of five. It's it's a big. This is a big number for me. I liked it because I I, I dinged them a little bit a little bit because if Ilya Kane had given herself right when at the end when she's like she's like, can I stay with with um the doctor because she wants to mess him up. If she had done her own little ear twitch, ooh, that would have got me. Like she, she's working for the New Republic, and she was brainwashed by the New Republic to hunt people. Ooh, that would have got me. Oh, I, this was a good episode for me. What did you think? Uh, overall, I thought it was a six out of ten. Oh, oh god. And uh, so normally I like moral ambiguity, but in this case, I did not. We'll ex I'll explain later why the moral ambiguity bothered me which is weird because normally i like it but here i didn't uh i thought the dog fight was awesome you know we'll get into that um i was disappointed and in, in Bo and din for getting caught out so i was like hmm I keep getting caught out in their fighters what's going on here uh the dr pershing and elia kane storyline to me felt like it had great potential but it felt slow in the episode so you know uh, I thought it was great visuals, characters, world building. I loved it. Um, so the big question is, what happens now with Din and Bo? They're back in the fold. What's next? And then the Pershing, Dr. Pershing and Elliot Kane storyline. What's next? Where's this going? I feel like the big stuff is coming up. Whereas this episode, eh, 6 out of 10. I see what All you're right, saying. All right, let's get into it. I feel like it's said no. But setup can be good. I don't know. It's just okay, a feeling. Okay. Fair enough. You know, it's art. You don't have to. This time okay. on The Mandalorian, season three, episode three. Let's get into it. Let's Clippy, get into dinner it. plate. Let's do it. Yes, this is in this scene. So they're they're just leaving. Oh, they're just mm -hmm. leaving the Mandalore. And so they're talking about like, like Mandor, uh, Mando, come with me back to my, my home and I'll give you a feast. Bring me to my ship and I'll be on my way. I would invite you in for a feast, but I'm guessing that helmet isn't coming off again. This is the way. This is the way. I mean, Eating it's been a while. It's been a while since I've been a teenager. But, like, can Mando take a plate and like, go back to his bedroom and <laughs> eat alone? Like, like, he can't take off his helmet. Like, like, give him a little plate, his little dinner plate, and he can eat it somewhere else. This is like a full-on, like, no, no. It, it feels like the helmet philosophy was born in a readiness mentality in wartime. So you keep your helmet on at all times because you never know when the next bullet's coming. But you got to eat. I mean, it does. it's like if you're around the dinner table and you got to eat. So take the helmet off, eat, and then put it back on. It seems like it's the rule is being taken a little too far. I got two solutions for you. One, okay. half of us can take off our helmets and eat while the other half stands guard. Two, nobody takes off their helmets ever. All of their food is a blended slurry. Put a straw up there, mmm, mm -hmm. chicken and peanut butter. Mmm, just, just slurry it. It's like Ketracel White in the Dominion. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, no that, that's perfect. Yeah, right. They, did, they didn't eat at all. They just got drugs given yeah. to them, right? That's right. All right. They could they could okay. dominion themselves. That is a science fiction faux pas to do a Star Trek Star Wars crossover reference, but I did it. Whoops. Nah, we we, we like both fandoms. There, there's right. no Star yeah. Wars or Star. We like it all. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I would like to see how he eats. It'd be very interesting. Well, how any Mandalorian eats who's following the way. Or maybe, maybe they like take a steak and they like cut it up into tiny little, tiny little individual bites and like fork under the helmet. <laughs> 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 takes their meals take forever. <laughs> Just tiny little nibbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting. Oh yeah. So this is um. So this is actually right after they're talking about dinner. Mm -hmm. Uh. I'm a little confused. The, the Mandalorians keep getting attacked by people coming up on their six. Ready? We took a hit. Okay, where did they come from? There's no long range sensors or anything. They're like right there already. Yeah. It looks like a squadron of TIE interceptors. Where'd they come from? I've scuffed off a lot of Imperial warlords. Bo-Katan ship really had to have some some radar on the back. <laughs> it's like forward radar and like forward vision, but just nothing in the back. Mm -hmm. Right, and these these intrasolar system distances, you can't see with it with your That's eyes. Right. It's just too far. You need these sensors that go out, probably to a light year at least on the short range scale. You know. Also, uh, Din asks um, Bo. Where did they come from? And she, her explanation isn't like, from behind the moon. She's like, oh, I pissed some people off. It's like, well, actually, where did they come from? Ready? It looks like a squadron of TIE interceptors. Where'd they come from? I've scuffed off a lot of Imperial warlords. Ah, uh, Din's a... asking the question of like, <laughs> physically, where are they from? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, tactically, where do they come from? But she answered it strategically like strategic politically <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even it's politically like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's okay but surprised mm. ah and then okay so the the tie fighters get the drop on them and they have to escape into the planet below uh let's watch the dog fight it's actually a pretty long one so here we go Down for the drop. Okay, so uh, Din is gonna jump out of the the craft, land on the platform, hop in his ship, and then take off. They haven't even practiced this; they just did it on the fly. Just like, don't wow. it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming in, jump! Woo! So dangerous. Easy. Man, then, oh. Then he does this. He does this maneuver. Is this a reference to something, some other show or something? And I feel like, like I've like seen up. it before. I feel like I've seen this before somewhere. Before. Definitely. Oh, that definitely happened in the Matrix. Neo yeah. and Trinity go above the clouds and then they like stall and come back down. But it wasn't a combat oh. thing. Is this a good idea to do this in combat? Because don't you just get a period where you're stationary and floating? Like, that's the most stationary a ship can be. And that's then you're just easier to target. Yeah, why not flip it around and then thrust downward when you want to make the turnaround? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, just like throwing a ball in the sky, like the slowest point is at the apex. Right, so you're, you're doing a free fall and the apex, you're just sort of hanging, literally like hanging. hanging up there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you should have done this, flipped around. And then we want to turn around, thrust downwards so you get maximum G forces. Let's see it. He works though. Got him. So scary. Now we're back to Bo. So my thing here was, she's going through like the cliffs and stuff. Why don't the Tie Fighters just pull back, <laughs> go high? <laughs> And just wait. <laughs> and they're like, what's she doing down there? Like, fancy flying. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll just wait. She's doing a canyon run. Fancy flying. Like, 
Gets one. Then you notice coming up here, Din is gonna fly off, separate from Bo, and then he's gonna do his fancy like I'm gonna hide and then pop out maneuver that he's done in previous episodes. <laughs> okay, there he goes. Flies away. Flies away. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Right there. You gotta give me an Ivan. There's something you can't do. Wait, what? <laughs> oh shit, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's the first that's the first episode. Yeah. Let's see it again. That's the first episode of Firefly. Oh my gosh, that is right. Yeah. That's exactly what they do. They turn they turn one engine around mm -hmm. and like spin and then rock it. Yeah, it's totally a crazy iPhone from Oh man. <laughs> Firefly. That's awesome. One more time. There's something you can't do. <laughs> Own the heck out of that reaver. Yep. That reaver had no chance. Yep. <laughs> also the the aerodynamics on those big wings, they're really strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going high speed one way, and you're kicking up drag. You know, and it's this full force of the air is hitting this solid surface. Whew. Plus, it wasn't like straight up; it was slightly forward, which means you get a tip to the side. Oh, you get a tippy rotatey stuff going on. Mm -hmm. She's really good. a good pilot. She's a good yeah. pilot. She's the best pilot in the fleet. Wait, yep. that's different. <laughs> I mean, Starbucks. It's the fleet. The fleet is between. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. She's Starbuck. <laughs> she is Starbuck. That's true. That's right. <laughs> She's the best, best stick in the fleet. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Mm. Also, this this picture right here. So this is after the dogfight is done, and a new horde of Tie fighters and Tie bombers is coming in. I'm sort of getting the sense that these sensors are inadequate. So we're talking maybe 10 miles of sensor range here for this group. This is where the DIN is, and this is where the group is just starting to be visible. No wonder they get the drop on them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping there's different ranges for this. You know, must mm -hmm. be in a close quarters range on planet. Maybe the um, the Naboo fighters, they're only fighting Gungans, and they're like, well, we'll be pretty close to them. Like, we're only going to be like 10 miles away. I think it's fine. You know, the, the Naboo fighter is very aerodynamic. It could be primarily an in-atmosphere fighter, in which case you don't need these also, huge long-range sensors. But when when the Naboo fighter squadrons went up to fight the, the mm, trade people, like, they just went up no problem. So, I, I mean... Maybe it was originally for in atmosphere, but they could go out to space, no problems. I mean, they're, they, maybe, I'm maybe saying they the, can go into space, but they're primarily in atmosphere. That's mm -hmm, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. maybe. Possible. But this doesn't yeah. make any sense because Bo Katan's ship is a different ship altogether, and, she, and the TIE fighter's got the drop on her. Maybe there's technological limitations. Maybe. This is the best they could do. Because they did not discover the fourth Maxwell equation. They got three out of four. And so they don't quite understand E and M. They can't measure out that far. Well, maybe, maybe okay, so maybe they do know E and M. Maybe. And intrasolar system, light is slow. So if you could you have like light, light speed or like hyperspace capable ships, uh, if you have light speed sensors, it's not gonna be fast enough. Which means they don't hmm. prepare these things for super high distances because it's not going to be fast enough. Yeah, so what's the point? Yeah. Okay. It, okay. If anybody knows Star Wars sensors, let us know. Okay. 
Coruscant. Uh, the party plant. Well, no, okay, Coruscant party place. Yeah. So this is where Dr. Pershing has given his talk. Which, okay, weird that he's given a talk. Um, but yeah, then I was noticing some Republic corruption. Ready? Hello, Doctor. But you work with a government that appreciates your contribution, no? Of course, I'm very lucky. And we're lucky like to I have was... you, Dr. Pershing. How are you finding the city? Comfortable, I hope. Yes, though anything would be comfortable compared to the Outer Rim. <laughs> the Outer Rim, I can't imagine. You know, I was almost drafted. Imagine me serving. Oh, darling, that was the Empire. Empire, Rebels, New Republic, I can't keep track. That's why I should just keep my mouth shut. We try not to get involved. You're just so brave. So glad you're working for us now. So this imperial scientist doing morally questionable things. The people on Coruscant, eh, it's okay. Whatever. Hmm. Doesn't affect my land, whatever. So here's a, here's a problem I have with this moral ambiguity here. I love this in Star Wars, the moral ambiguity, because the Republic is great, idealistically, but eventually it falls into moral decay, slavery, exploitation of workers, income inequality, and that causes, I think, a cycle into authoritarianism, that is the empire that brings and crushes the corruption with an authoritarian role, which then that becomes corrupt, which brings back the republic and it's the the cycle. Hmm. The reason I don't like it here is because it's too soon. The republic just won. These guys should be more idealistic at this point. I don't know if they go instantly into corrupt mode, Mm -hmm. right? Um, if that's the case, a republic wouldn't last very long because if it goes instantly into corrupt mode, I feel like if for this cycle that I've built up in my head to last a long time, there needs to be a long period of non-corruption that eventually falls to decay. That's, Mm. that's why I don't like it. What do you think? I thought it was like the affluent people in the core worlds they don't really care who's ruling them because they're going to have a good life anyway so like who's in charge i don't care Mm. yeah and and they they're like we're glad to have you doing morally ambiguous stuff for us now like they don't really care like they're there's just all the political stuff doesn't matter i'm rich i'm rich bitch whatever i I like that in terms Mm of normal society but in the yeah. Star Wars society, the this is the Republic is not going to last long at all. It doesn't even get its ideal run, you know. That's right, because the outer worlds are still getting trashed on. So there, right. someone someone from there is going to rise up and be like, "This was not cool. I don't like it." And then you get a new emperor eventually. Right. So this is like the Republic is lost already. Yeah. So they needed to purge all these people. They needed to like swap the outer world plant people for the in world people and mix it up. But that's what the empire does. They'll come in with that authoritarianism and kick these people out of their positions of power. Only the empire can do that. So we were just asking for empire already. The public's not going to last. Yeah, maybe it's not going to last. They're doing some sketchy stuff already. Mm -hmm. I remember in the old Republic game from like 3,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, you go to the you go to Coruscant and there's slavery and they're exploiting robots and laborers and stuff, but it's like the Republic has been around for hundreds of years at that point. So it's like okay, the decay has started. So that's why people like the Empire. Mm. But here we're already in the decay stage, so we're fucked. Yeah, yeah, we could see the Star Wars universe flip real quick. Yeah, flip real quick. Interesting. That I would wonder be if ironic, Bo-Katan comes in. Bo-Katan comes in. She's the new empress. But the more you yes. use authoritarianism like that, the more that's imperial and dark side. Light side is about consensus and idealism. The more you come so, in with a heavy hand, that's authoritarianism. That's, em- that's imperial. That's dark side. So Dark side Luke then. Skywalker and, and Leia and Han Solo and uh, what's the squid guy's name? Squidward. Uh, Admiral Akbar. Akbar. And yeah. the whole leadership team, they're failing. They're failing. They failed. They failed. They, they lost yeah. it. They were warriors, not politicians. Mm. Oh, well. 
not politicians. politicians. They were warriors. They were not rulers. They need people to come in and govern. They've already lost. It's crazy. They've already lost. Already lost. Oh, here's my, that's, that's the clippy. Yeah. So this is why I said during the review I don't like the corruption already because it's too soon. I want my Luke Skywalker idealistic republic to last for a while. But it's, it's already over. Too, it's at least too soon to be that on the surface. Like if there's some type of section 34 buried somewhere, like, okay, okay, okay. okay but okay. Like for this to be so open, yeah, they're having problems. Right, yeah. But they, they cover it with like glitz little... and glamour and it's pretty, like... Mm -hmm. there's rot but the empire had glitz and glamour right for the Didn't empire they? people yeah 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 it's the same thing if you were in the empire or if you were part of the structure you lived glitz and glamour like they're, they're I guess they didn't have yeah i guess they weren't austere enough in the empire to get rid of these people mm. Mm. interesting okay i'm unhappy now mm. That's all right. This is a fun episode. <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> right. What happened so to Gideon? Keep going. So Gideon, I actually don't remember what happened to Gideon, but they talk about what happened to him. Gideon. I heard he escaped the route to the war tribunal. No, that was just the cover story. I heard they hooked him up to a mind flare. I try not to think about him anymore. So one guy says he escaped. Another guy says he got hooked up to a mind flayer. Um, which is another sign of this corruption and rot in the uh, the Republic because they're already using it, bad Imperial tech. And then the third person's like, I don't want to think about him. Where did he go? He's out there? Bad Imperial tech is a matter of position. If he's having these like nasty, want to kill people thoughts, then maybe convincing him not to is a good thing. But to do it with... Okay, the Republic is all open to all forms of cognitive types, including sociopathy. Mm -hmm. And so building a, a society when all those people can thrive in a moral way is the Republic way. To get rid of him, because he's not conforming to the standard, that's, that's dark side stuff in my book. Wait, Re Republic is like Leia time, right? Mm -hmm. Then they collapse, and then this is New Republic? There's a new republic. Maybe the new republic is a little bit imperial stuff. They like instead of swinging back and forth, they're like, let's try, let's do a little bit of not so nice stuff. Not, so they're I like mean, they're, the they're trying Windu to, republic. Yes, not realizing that this is going to tank them. This, 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 that's just accelerated empire. But they're trying. They're trying it. Like let's do it differently. Let's use the bad techniques, but we'll do it in a good way. It's already but over. Actually, they're tanking. It's, uh, it's already over. They, it's, uh, it's already over. I mean, okay. I mean, the we I mean if this is where they're this. going, if this is where they're going, this would be such a curveball for me that I would love it. I'd love it. I'm back on board. I love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If this is where they're going, it's just like complete demoralization of of our heroes. <sighs> maybe maybe the new republic becomes the effective empire, and Ray has a kid that has to overcome them. A new Luke. Star Wars. A new Luke. That is the... It's not bad. That's not bad. Luke... We know Luke and Yoda failed. Mm-hmm. Because they were too good. You need a little bit of Mace Windu. Maybe we Mace... We don't know if Mace Windu died. Maybe he's good. Where's Mace when you need him? Mm -hmm. The third way. Third way. Maybe I mean we all all we know is that he falls down into Coruscant. Maybe maybe he's okay. He could be because he could have force flown. Force flown. Force hang glide. Maybe. <laughs> so if Mace Windu comes back, he can guide them through this razor's edge of balance between light side and dark side to create a just but open society. We're not doing. We wouldn't do these wild Wind, swings. It it would be Wind Windutopia. That, that's what he that's what he'd name it <laughs> it's like a picture of his, his face and a giant purple lightsaber coming out of coruscant <laughs> mm -hmm. so big that when it sweeps when coruscant rotates it like slices ships as it goes <laughs> hey well it's good but also a little bit bad i, I, I mean 
Coruscant doesn't rotate that fast. You can do some avoidance tactics and you're okay. Oh, okay, okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the bad pilots, <laughs> like, they get sliced. They don't have air them. traffic control. They just, whoop, he got sliced. Well, this the, is absurd. The Republic this is an and the Imperial Empire. Scenario. Both of them, they had, the, both of them had ATC. <laughs> the new <laughs> Republic, no, no air traffic controller. Mm. It's chaos. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So this is like the New Republic Disposal Bureau, Decommissioning Bureau or something. They have these very heavily built desks. Mm. And uh, our friend Dr. Pershing is right here. I guess he's helping keep the paperwork up for disposing of Imperial technology. Mm. Is that what he's doing? He's record keeping. Record keeping. I, I understood it as record keeping is anything, like whatever they just put on his desk is what he's doing. He's mm -hmm. manually inputting some of these little chippy guys into into whatever the records are, and and yeah, yeah he these are the chippy guys, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever they assign him, and he happens to get assigned um, decommissioning stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's some like New Republic decommissioning, Imperial decommissioning, whatever decommissioning happening, and he gets assigned stuff. Yeah. Honestly, these yeah. cubicles are they seem. I think a lot better than modern day office cubicles. For sure. You get your own fairly large box. Feels nice and cozy, like it's like you're mm -hmm. like a cat, like there's a little cozy spot. Yeah. Well lit. But well lit. It would be nice if you had more back support, but maybe he's just kind of that guy who doesn't want to lean back. No, no, but if but if he likes to lean up if he he's leaning up so that he can get to the microscope. He needs to have a chair that supports him and is high enough that he can sit naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit imperial because we've decided from our Andor analysis that the Empire wants their workers slightly uncomfortable all the time, so they're always on alert. That's right. So right. this chair mm -hmm. right here, a little bit imperial. You could sit back and relax, but then your your overseer is like, ah, that guy's relaxing. Yeah. I can tell right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ooh, this room. This is this is Dr. Pershing's. I guess it's for all of the the amnesty program people. They come in uh, once a week, once a month. I'm well, not sure what the schedule is, but they check in with this with this robot and they report in you know, how they're doing mentally. I mean, uh, this is from the New Republic's perspective. You know, just taking care of your people, making sure that they're adjusting. Um, from but but in a maybe negative way, it's them keeping tabs on on the amnesty uh, people. Um, what struck me was that this is this is literally robotic of them. This job should have been a person, a person that's looking and listening and reading the person's, person's expressions. His actual job, this one, this could have been done by robots. Yeah. So that's so that this is, should be automated, and this yes. should be done by a person. Data entry, just put the chips in a reader, design a reader. How you take even if it takes a year to do it, put it do that, and then mm -hmm. automate it. Spend people time on people you know and this is more data toward the they're falling to the dark side because look how austere this office is it's mm -hmm. robotic bare literally bones. and it's bare bones it doesn't it doesn't improve your emotional health at all the last vestige of the new republic is a fake house plant that's that's not even looking that good it's not okay. it's not fake to ragged, be in a yeah. life <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a statement of the New Republic doesn't really care about these amnesty program people. It really is prison labor. I mean, they 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 are willing to spend people's lives doing data entry, but they won't spend one person's time taking care of these people. So I like it if they're going to do this. If this yeah. is where the story is going. I love it. But it's so soon. It's so soon. Yeah. Evil rises up without you noticing. Mm. And I mean, wouldn't that be like if we conquer, we conquer Nazi Germany and like mm -hmm. within 10 years there, Hitler too is on, is back online. Like what? Whoa. Okay. But I guess that history is different every time it happens so 
some of our best rocket scientists came right out of the V2 rocket program. For sure. Yeah. But we had morally Germany, ambiguous people working for us. We certainly had morally ambiguous people working for us, but it didn't, Germany wasn't corrupted, you know, 10 years after World War II again. You know? Would it be Germany or would it be the U.S.? Who, who like, I have a genuine question. Like, so I think in the Star Wars analogy, it would be the empire is like Germany, Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. And the Re New the Republic current... would be Germany after current. World War II and they're dem democratic and stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it would be like the new government after after the Third Reich fell. And then yeah. if they were like evil right away. Mm -hmm. But history is different every time, you know. Sometimes it goes down this way, the way it's gone down for us. But sometimes a different historical path, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. They didn't do a good job dealing with the wealthy people on Coruscant, and they're already in trouble. Yep. On a lighter note, <laughs> this is cool. This is the peak of the highest mountain on Coruscant. Mm -hmm. These buildings are Very so cool. tall that they're like at the peak of Mount Everest on Coruscant. And it's just... Looks like a rock. That's hmm. it's pretty cool. I was interested that it wasn't snow capped because at least here on Earth, like our tall mountains are snow capped. Mm. I, I guess uh, Mount Olympus on Mars not snow capped. But I think I, I, I was thinking that maybe on natural Coruscant it would be snow capped, but with these high buildings and the climate controlled areas, it's no longer snow capped. That's Coruscant. what I was thinking. Coruscant Tech may have evolved to get rid of weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've covered. They they've taken over the entire planet. Why not control the weather too? Right, and certainly the the city itself will affect the weather tremendously. So the surface is now up at the. That's right. At the tip of the mountain. So, in fact, I think we saw that. I think we saw that during our Andor discussion, when like the down low. They don't have good airflow, so they have these big old fans to push air around. So mm -hmm. the skyscrapers go up and they block the wind flow, just like trees around a city. And so there is no weather down low. There's not even airflow down low. Okay. I, cool. I like this. This consistent. is all consistent. Yeah. Republic paperwork. We're already getting into too much bureaucracy here. Here we go. That's right equipment i'm archiving it's all coded to be destroyed looks like it but it's all still perfectly good it's imperial technology yes but they can still be put to good use we are really behind here i just think i could be helpful if i could it would require authorization from the department you could submit a c1023 request forget i asked so this is like more imperial than it is republic a republic person light side person I think would read the person in front of them and be like, okay, he's making an effort. I can use my judgment and say, please give it a shot. But an imperial person, authoritarian person who says the paperwork said so, that's what we're doing. Done. Final. What are you trying, what are you trying to do? Break the rules here? Come on. No, the rules are the rules. I could try to benefit. No, don't. No. So can I use this my also, human judgment? No. Imperial. This is also another sign of the New Republic is a bit dark because instead of instead of using the knowledge and the hard earned ideas from the previous culture, they're like, nope, we're gonna wipe it from history. We don't want anything, we don't want anyone to know about them. Like that, that's erasing, that's evil. Right, you should take the history on board mm -hmm. and Fold it in. learn from it. Fold it in, you know, not shy away from it, not destroy it. That's a good point. Uh, who's in charge of the New Republic? Do we where's know Leia, where's Luke? Actually, Leia is more of a politician than Luke. Leia is like, right. it's kind of Leia. What's, what's with Leia? I guess, I guess Luke is off. Wait, so where is this in the timeline? Is this, is this, is this after mm, Rey or before Rey? Yeah, I think we need to look it up. Because um, Luke might be off on his island by himself or he might be dead already. I, I don't know what the timeline is. Even, even still, it's fairly soon. I mean, but if, if Leia is dead, then she wouldn't be there. So then who is who would be? Uh, 
Uh, what do I want to look for? I don't for? even know how to search this. Yeah. I guess um, look for like BBY. If we can figure let's go, out. Let's just look at season one. If we can look let's for the reference relative one. to the. Yeah. But, oh, it's nine, nine after, after Battle after of Yavin. After Battle of Yavin. So only nine years. So Luke is alive. Leia's alive. Leia's Akbar's alive. alive. Solo's alive. Yeah. Where are my heroes? I mean, Luke is supposed to be off training Jedi, so he's focused okay. on that. Who's the political okay. leader of the New Republic, the heart and soul? It's Leia. It's Leia. Where's Leia right now? This is consistent with episodes 7, 8, 9, where the rebels have basically lost all power, and there's power vacuums left and right. I see. Oh, no. And so the Our First heroes. Order takes over. Oh no, they fought the war, no. but they couldn't govern. Leia. But Leia has political experience from Alderaan and that whole training she got growing up. It's still, it's, it's hard for one person to rule an entire galaxy unless you're the emperor. <laughs> but I mean, it's like delegation and consensus and... But Leia. if you can't have a trustworthy chain of command, you get corruption. It's got it's to be people on the team all the way down. Not not necessarily, because you, if you're you're building systems so that people can thrive in a free way, it's not necessarily making sure everybody's loyal up and down the chain. It's more about you know a confederation oh, and, and freedom, mm -hmm. you know, decentralized authority, delegation, consensus, and and that's really hard to set up, and that falls mostly on Leia. And she's completely failed. No. No. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And it's so Leia, consistent no. with 789. That, that's the setup. That's how it happens. God damn it. So good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't. I don't want to talk about the this more anymore. we think about it, the better it gets. <laughs> this, this, so, so this is Doctor Pershing's uniform. He sets it down nice and neatly, lays it down on his bed in preparation for tomorrow. Does that mean this is his only uniform? Like, he doesn't have a chain, like a, a, one other change of clothing. He wears the same thing everything every day. That feels like prison. Like, even if it's the same uniform, but he can alternate between them, like clean them, wash them. Like, like no, you don't get that. You get this one thing. You wear it every day. First impression is, no, it's the Republic. They're okay. But now I'm like, mm, this is a prisoner uniform with a prisoner badge. With a badge. They never address him by name. It's always his identifying L52. So you're dehumanizing people? Yep. And you don't want them to know each other's names. You just give them numbers. And they always talk to each and, other in numbers. And Republic people can be like, look at the badge. He's bad. Shame. Yeah. Boom. There it is. We know who he is and who he was in the past. And that's all that matters. It's your badge. Ooh, New Republic. Uh, I want to believe in you. I can't believe in them. Okay, on a lighter note, what's going on with train safety? Train safety. Let's talk about that. Okay. How are you supposed to go from car to car? Ready? That's scary. Okay, even if there was a platform to walk across, what? Still, you got like, if you fall off right or left, you're falling into the abyss of course, huh? You get, you're doing a Mace window right away. And yeah, and not having a platform means if you fall straight down, you're gonna get sliced and diced by the couplers. By the coupler, and that could decouple the train, and now you got errant cars, errant, errant trains. Why can't we have like a flexible umbilical? Yeah, the little wind guards. There's not. There may not be wind in Coruscant, but like you still get a train ripping through the atmosphere. There's going to be vortices and pressure complicated. You get sucked out. Mm -hmm. Some so truly effect. No here? good. So dangerous. Ah! How is this supposed to work? Maybe it was only supposed to be for the droidy guys. 
And the Jordy guy goes doot, 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 and extends the platform, but it still doesn't connect. It gets, it gets them close. <laughs> also, if, it's, if you're not supposed to go between cars, then those doors that open, maybe Didn't at the shut. station platform, should be locked and shut during movement. Yeah. And only the droid can go beep, boop, boop, beep, and then go between them. Right. All passengers, right. lock them up like prisoners. What, what kind of safety is this? Crazy. That being said, this is very light side, allowing people freedom to choose what they want to do. To die. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm talking about, okay. So after they've jumped from car to car to car to car, they get to the end of the train and they're going to jump off the train. I was thinking, no fucking way. No, no fucking no way. Fucking no fucking way. Look at this. No fucking way. So if they, there, there's like buildings and metal and boxes flying by and they get on the one like cushiony thing. Little, little landing pad. Even the boxes nearby are cushioned. <laughs> Plus the thing they, the, the cushiony thing when they jump off is, you know, way behind them. How did they yeah. even know it was there? Oh, well, well, Elaine's done, Elia has done this before. Kane has done this before. She knows exactly when to jump. She's maybe she's force sensitive. Maybe she's like, now Anakin and jump and it's like perfect. Oh, that has to be the explanation. That's the yeah. only way you could be that precise. So the new Republic empties out her brain. Qui Gon hops in. Qui Gon hops in there from the force. He's a force ghost. He he takes over her body and now he's like, jump Obi Wan. You're my Padawan. If they had jumped into like several miles of Jello, that would have been fine. That would have been fine. 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 This one. No, they're splattered. I mean, they made it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But is, you yeah, think Elia doing. is light side or dark side if she is force sensitive? Oh, I don't know. By the end of the episode, I don't know which side she's on. I mean, I think she's dark side if she's force sensitive. I mean, she, she cranks up that thing to kill Dr. Persing or whatever. Just like really fuck him up. Right. Is is that her nature? Is she doing that? Is she a rogue and she's like killing the amnesty program people against the orders of the New Republic, or is she programmed by the New Republic and that's why she's she, she's carrying out her orders? Mm, I don't know if I would consider her a dark side or if she's been essentially brainwashed by the New Republic. Well, we've well, I would argue is how I would argue it. The New Republic is essentially already pretty far down the path to the dark side. Yep. So if, if she has force sensitivity that she's unaware of and she's following the Republic's lead, she's following the Republic's lead down the dark path. Okay, I buy that. Yeah, it's going to corrupt her. Yeah. Hmm. Because a true Republic on the light side, this behavior would be unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yeah, no uh, jumping from trains. You got to pay your ticket. Dark side. Dark side is heck. Actually, that's the biggest sign. Mm -hmm. Didn't pay her ticket. Didn't pay her ticket. Dark side. This was cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a... This is actually a, an important logistical thing that has to happen. You have to land the ship somewhere and dismantle them. Mm. You know? Yeah, otherwise you just have operational warships floating around. Like, mm -hmm. mm, take them apart. Yeah, take them apart. You can use the resources. Those lasers. Mm -hmm. yeah. lasers could be used for like eye surgeries. Sure. Reuse them. Recycle, yes. reuse. Repeat. Reduce. Reduce, recycle, repeat. No, <laughs> no, that's also wrong. Reduce, I mean, reuse, recycle. Actually, <laughs> actually, why don't they just keep the Star Destroyers? Why dismantle them? Why not yeah, just, just paint a New Republic symbol on it? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, hollow them out and use them as like interplanetary buses. Sure. I mean, Imperial, you still need a fleet. Real cruise right? ship. Yeah. Make it a holiday thing for the poor. Yeah. Why not? It's it's the ultra rich can have their yachts, and everyone else got these cool cruise ships. But they're but also going to need a fleet. You know, I think you, you know the even though they've conquered a lot of the galaxy, they still need a fleet to protect Why? it from pirates. Pirates and the huts and all the others stuff going on in the galaxy you need a fleet so why would you decommission yeah. they're functioning also, ships they're also decommissioning the alliance ships they're they're, they're decommissioning both fleets 
Ooh, that so, sounds that sounds like a Darks thing to do. You take away people's ability to fight against you. You you control all the ships. If you can't control all the ships, you break them apart. That's right. So they're confiscating all the Alliance ships and the Imperial ships, so nobody can fight back. But wh what's where's the where's the Republic fleet? Are they building a new one? Right. The new Republic so, fleet. Maybe they're they're not concerned about the outer planets having protection. An additional sign of corruption. They are those rich people did already shit on the rim. Yeah. Maybe they don't care. I mean, they could use these ships as shit delivery to the rim. They're they're not even looking out for their own selves. They're not. It's weird. We'll see where this goes, because I'm not sure. Yeah. Now that I think about I'm it. Curious. So Elia and Dr. Pershing go into this the Star Destroyer that's getting decommissioned, and this is the cloning lab. I didn't quite understand what this equipment was. Did you see some maybe oh. vials here? Yeah, vials, test tubes, centrifuge test guys. Tubes. I thought what those cylinders are, because they look like like desiccant chambers, I just guess. Like uh, a yeah. it could be a desiccant or like a vacuum chamber keeping air out. Uh, mm. It's looked like what's stuff in lab. Yeah. And then, I mean, there. Are, this is another shot of the lab from a different angle. We've got some sample containers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, microscope. I didn't. It's cool. I, I assumed that because like they just went into a random star destroyer. They weren't in like Gideon star destroyer where he was doing his work mm -hmm. for. And so, so I figured this was like kind of generic equipment, like a, I don't know, somehow bio something lab, and they would have mm -hmm. enough stuff to do what he needs. Maybe, the, maybe the Empire was like really, really cared about their empire scientists. <laughs> they give them labs with a whole bunch of stuff and just mass produce it. And then whatever the scientist needs was more or less in there, but you could order for special stuff, but you know, more or less over there. So that means in, on the Star Destroyers, they had a team of scientists for field work with yeah. with a, a small lab like this. That's pretty cool. It's like, it's like Star Trek stuff, right? Explore, do some yeah. science. Maybe we can colonize a planet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty organized. And I guess the serious research should be done at a facility on a planet. Mm. But I guess he can grab equipment from this rudimentary lab to actually get this research he wants started. Mm -hmm. He said it was, look, yeah. they were looking for a mobile lab. So like, oh, like not big, heavy stuff, but, you know, enough stuff to gather samples, do some cursory, some cursory analysis, and then like send that off to a, a proper planet side lab. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I'm on board. Yeah. It's I mean, very cool Empire exploring. It's pretty good. It yeah, would have been so board. cool to be a scientist. The Empire just saying, just saying, they take care of you. Mm -hmm. New Republic double Ooh, speak. Double Ready? speak. Ooh, this got me. Indoctrination by the Empire is challenging to overcome. This is a mind flare. It's a non-invasive experimental treatment recently approved. It's a mind flare. We found at low voltages it can be used to help soothe. You'll experience a yeah. great sense of relief in no time at all. You're going to wipe my mind. This isn't the Empire, son. This device is used to heal. So the ex-Imperial guy is talking directly. And the Republic guy is beating around the bush. <sighs> Euphemisms, saying things in a very generous way. Ooh, I felt bad. Ooh, I felt bad. Actually, also, I didn't know if this, if the Mon Calamari, if he had also been an ex-Empire guy. And because he's like, Ooh. I had used it myself. Like, and it was quite pleasant. Like, was it or did someone program you? Mm, he, it could be. How evil he's, would it be to, like, it would be so evil to, like, win a war and then take one soldier from the enemy team and have them brainwash the others. Like, oh my gosh, that's so evil. Like you won't you don't you wipe your hands of doing the evil yourself, you make other people do the evil to each other. That's the most evil. Where's Leia? Leia. I mean, even look at this this looks like a Spartan Imperial torture chamber. Hmm. You know what would help help the doc? Give him a little teddy bear. What are you doing? Make him feel comfortable. Look at this um, this window here. Mm -hmm. Remember we were watching Andor and they had this particular shape of, of oh, windows yeah. and screens? This is exactly an imperial shape. What is happening? Oh, 
What is happening? I, I, my world's been flipped. What is? I'm. Who are the good people? Who are the good people? Where are any good people? What is happening? Oh, the Mandos are in their culvert. They're the good people. Everyone else evil. <laughs> this is the way. But but Mandalorians are not like, they're not Jedi. You know, they're yeah. warriors, and they can sometimes be morally ambiguous. True. They can be hired. They can be mercenaries. Sure. Yeah. <sighs> On a light. <lighter. laughs> Ready? They had so to do fun. it. It was a trap. <laughs> so so perfect. He's like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had to do it. Even though he's green and Admiral Akbar is brown, he's a It's just the same species, and there's what billions of them in the galaxy. <laughs> oh, that's racist. Oh, that's a, ooh. He looked right at him. He's like, this is this motherfucker just says it's a trap. That's right. fucked up. That's that's anti squidism. Super fun though. Super fun. Yeah. Cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. And then weird. this. This was weird. So Elia okay. Based on what we said now, I'm totally convinced that the Republic's fucked. So Elia Kane staying behind and basically enhancing the torture of Dr. Pershing makes a lot of sense. But as I was watching it, I was like, why did the Republic guys let Elia Kane stay? She's not trustworthy. Do you mind if I stay? Yes, you're welcome to stay. Look how hard he's smiling. It seems nice. So oh, yeah. <laughs> Elia is not trustworthy. Is she trustworthy? Like, maybe. Like, because because she turned him in. For, so from the New Republic's perspective. They have an, an officer doing exactly what they want. Now, do they want her to be be really like harming these people? Maybe. Maybe that's part of the double talk. Maybe her code for can I stay is like code for like like I'm gonna do this. Please leave so that you can have plausible deniability. Which this is corruption. Oh, double yeah. speak, corruption using underhanded methods no transparency mm -hmm. this is they're well on the way to the dark side they're slipping mm -hmm. i mean it's not even not even controversial anymore yep this is the fall of the new republic we're witnessing it plus did he did he even have a trial like they don't even have like some judicial <gasps> system set up that's for right impartial sentencing they're just like send in the hammer the, the cop said it, so it's true, period. It's true. You want to defend yourself? No, the cop already told us. Which is the kind of justice that the Empire corrupts itself into. Right. You know. And the New Republic says they don't do, but here they are doing it. Right, right. So Oof. we don't even get a honeymoon phase of the New Republic where things are ideal. You know, bureaucracies are working full steam ahead. And we don't even get that. Right yeah. down to the dirty. Right down. Right down. Well, here's the shot. It's red, so it's evil. It's evil. This is the last time we see Dr. Pershing. And and I don't know if if the mind flare kills him at when it's maxed out, or maybe it just rips away his personality. But either way, even if he does live and take it's not gonna be the same person. Right? Like like they're literally stripping away his personality. So in, in some sense, this is like he puts on a helmet and it's the last time like he never takes it off. It's pretty much Mandalorian. This is the way. This is the way. So that's a good question though. Is he if he gets his personality replaced, is he uh did he die and it's a new person? Or is it the same person revised? Re did you say revive or revised revised oh yeah yeah i mean depending on who you're talking to the new republic yeah. would say that he's been revised that he's been helped he's mm. been healed but to people that he knew before well he's not going to know them anymore and they're not going to know him he's mm -hmm. he's a new person in the shell that used to be their friend Oof. this is sad no? evil as fuck so magic chemistry. So this is um, we it's uh, Bo 
and we're back to the Mandalorians now. Bo mm. and Din are back with the Forger. Is that the person's name? The, the Armorer. The, the Armorer. Mm -hmm. And his proof that he bathed in the waters under Mandalore was this vial of water. And I was like, it's water. Like, what are they going to do? But yeah. uh, the Armorer dumps it in this special stuff. Um, and it shows proof that it was indeed the special water. So is this magic or chemistry? These are indeed the living waters. What do you think? Is there some kind of unique chemical composition or is it like somehow it's imbued with force magic or something? My take on this mm -hmm. is that um, or um, life uh, or, um, um, finds a way. So the water did a sex change? No, it did a DNA thing that you get dinosaurs. <laughs> okay, so so it's the waters from the living, God, the frogs, the frogs. <laughs> Life are uh, finds a way. Okay, so so it's water from it's water from the living waters, right? And so I figured mm -hmm. it was biological. There's some type of biology that only lives in the waters of Mandalore. Mm -hmm. So she adds it to the water for that they found on this planet. And then, and then the water from the Mandalore has all these little microbes. They're like, ooh, fresh water, glow. And then she's like, ah, I rec I've seen this this microbes before. This is from the living water. She, she didn't use her hand as much, but yeah. I see. So the that particular biology in the living waters, I like mm -hmm. that, somehow is unique and m can only be found on Mandalore. <gasps> Maybe it's from like the mythosaur micro gut biome. And so when Ooh. they killed the mythosaurs and it leaked into the waters, it filled the waters, all those little microbes. And that's now the Mandalore water. Only there. I like it. I like it. Okay. Okay. It's Very called cool. the living water. So I love it. That's a great yeah. explanation. So yeah. it's biology. And it only ha comes from something specific to the planet, like the mythosaurs. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, cool. Super cool. And I, and I think that is that is it with the episode. Mm hmm Yeah. Concluding so, remarks. I'm sad now. <laughs> sad. But I'm but, super yeah. happy for Bo Katan. Bo Katan has the support of the children of the watch. She knows about the mythosaur nobody else does, so nobody can go try and kill it before her. She can mm -hmm. wield the dawn. On mm -hmm. the galactic scale. Mm-hmm. But by the time mm -hmm. I mean but I guess, I, gosh, do we ever know if they recover? I don't know. I'll well, see. I mean, there's going to be a power vacuum because mm -hmm. the New Republic, we've decided after this episode, is really struggling. So there's a yeah. power vacuum in the galaxy. The Empire's in tatters. The Huts are on the Outer Rim doing their thing. Maybe there's an opportunity for the Mandalorians to pick up the pieces and build themselves back up in this vacuum be a new power to be reckoned with hmm. which means starbuck is now the leader of the galaxy in season yes. five yes <laughs> yes please yes so so i guess this is all about where does the, the dr pershing storyline going i guess this is the story of how the new republic is falling to the dark side which is a counterpoint to how bo-katan is going to rise up through the ranks with her second in command din yeah yeah maybe i actually also didn't know i mean it, if it feels like dr pershing's off the board now like he's had his brain wiped like he, I, I think he's done so was the dr oh. pershing story actually an elia kane story like setting up oh. she's gonna be evil because because i think at the end that they show like 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 why did she, why did she hunt dr pershing why did she go after him was it because he was on Moth Gideon's ship, and so she has like a vendetta? Like she's she's maybe either either she wants to go after Moth Gideon's crew herself, or maybe because the New Republic knew that she was on Moth Gideon's ship, they're using her memories to hunt down Moth Gideon's crew. So it could be Doctor Pershing's out of the picture. This is an Elia Kane storyline. Yeah, yeah, could be. I like where they're going. And we don't know if she's being controlled by the New Republic. Or we don't know if she's doing it, if she's a rogue. 
Mm. A lot to think about. I hope she becomes a Mandalorian. That would be nuts. Right? Because if, if she I if she lives by the creed, they'll let her in. I think she's going to be a, a, a force for the dark side. A dark Mando? She's not Mandalorian, though. Elia Kane. But if she could if she could become Mando, if she could, like, I don't know what their rules are, li- jump in the living waters, mm-hmm. save somebody's life, I don't, I don't know, whatever their Mando rules are. But that would be, that would be conflicted politically. Oh, my goodness. I suspect she's going to rise in the ranks of the Republic as the Republic is turning dark mm. and maybe a leader. Ah, because she has the ability to kill or at least memory wipe people, which is kind of killing. So she has yeah. she has the desire. She has the ability. She can push herself there. And she's yeah. politically astute, looks like. Mm-hmm. No, she knows how to navigate mm. around and she's covering her tracks. Hmm. Ooh, what's going to happen in the next episode? Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4. Let's, yeah, can't wait. See you guys next time. See you next time.